Uh, hey guys, uh, Deji here with me back with <laughs> whatever. You know what? Yeah, I'm here with Score. Who, who, who cares <laughs> <Again>. about professional? <laughs> who cares about being professional? But yeah, he free came in once, and uh, oh, what overall as a whole, what would you guys say? I'm just gonna say this right now, Nintendo, and surprisingly of all people, Microsoft saved this year's E3. I'm Everything uh, let me put it like this, you can pretty much sum this up as, oh, I can't believe that only Nintendo and Microsoft came to E3, and no one else was there because, yeah, the, a lot of the other companies might as well have not have come, and trust me, that pains me to say it regarding the Capcom one, but... Yeah, Nintendo and Microsoft saved E3. Well, okay, to be fair, stuff like Summer Games Fest, it did its job proper. That said, a lot of the major events were weak, and I get why, and I still think like they could have done better, but we can go more into depth with that when we get to it. What about you, yeah. Gio? Honestly, uh, it was fine overall, could have been better, but taking into account what Deji mentioned about the pandemic affecting everyone, this could have been a disaster because, again, it was the first E3 after um, the skipping of last year and uh, a lot of companies were kind of unprepared for it. But I still do believe we stick the landing as a whole. There were people who were clearly not on the same level as others, but uh, on a whole, I do believe this was still fine. Despite absences and fuck ups. Dadger? Uh, I didn't watch most of E3. I, I was out of town. <laughs> True, but you <laughs> probably it? have watched the, the other conferences. Yeah, the only other conferences. The, okay, so I saw like half of Ubisoft's before I had to get leave. Then I saw Microsoft's and Nintendo's. So you pretty much and. saw the best things of E3. Oh, you didn't oh, see right. the Square Capcom. Enix one. I was, I was with you guys with Capcom. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but besides that, it's what I was saying. I went, even though we had some crazy predictions, like the Warner Brothers topic. That was, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said some bitch, God. Uh, To be fair, they never specified it was going to be just that from the get-go, which they probably should have just specified yes. from the get-go. Well, uh, and to be... And believe it or not, Dads, that's probably not as bad as the Bandai Namco section, good oh God. God. And uh, and to be fair, I still do believe Neverem Stu Never Studios is probably working on still something new, so it's just a matter okay. of we'll have to wait and see what I'm happens. I'm surprised we didn't see the Star LEGO Star Wars game. That... Yeah, that is weird. Okay, okay, okay. I'll just say this as a whole. I get that a lot of people will rag on this probably being one of the worst E3s of all time, but me, honestly, I said it before and I'll say it again. Every time E3 is gone, people tend to be sad because for as much as people joke or whine about how, oh, E3 is becoming irrelevant, gee, shock of all shocks, when it's not gone, suddenly there's a gaping hole where a lot of game information could be given. And Hold then look, on. I get it. E3 I, I, has... Let, let, let yeah. me put this in the best way. E3 mm -hmm. is just a hype cycle. We, much, know, we get excited for things that may or may not there, and then we're disappointed, and then we're like, E3 is irrelevant, and then when it comes back, we get excited and do the whole thing all over again. I'll just say this, I feel like we're better having E3. Like, yeah, say what you will about hypes or broken promises, but it is still a guaranteed point where information is to be given. But may not be the, what the you wanted, but okay. you still will get something out of it. And trust me, I know that some companies are trying to do their own little Nintendo direct s sort of things, but there's no guarantee that they'll stick. And even still, E3 was always a guaranteed focal point. And you know, I'll just say this, I get too much of a kick out of E3 to want to see it gone. Even, for, okay, through all the good and all the bad, E3 is still worth keeping around. I'm still in the opinion that, like, with Nintendo Directs and State of Plays, we don't really need it as much as we thought we did, because gaming news comes out whenever, especially with I, how big gaming is. I do believe that, however, 
keep while keeping the, the direct style formula, having concentrated the news in a particular period of year is beneficial. Um, yeah. Tokyo yeah. Game Show is on other occasions such as that, or the, uh, in to, to a lesser extent, say San Diego Comic Con, or towards the end of the year with the Game Awards. As much as the the actual awards gets cringier and cringier as year as the year passes, um, the actual announcement can be important. So again. It's a matter of having of all companies do pays their own announcements, you know. Um, the way you present it also is, is important, of course. But yes. again, this format, similar to the Nintendo Direct, is working in, in the long run for most of them. So if they just keep this uh, and, you know, decide when to show them, and sometimes a couple of them do that, do that together, the summer period helps. Right? So that's why E3 was created in the first place, uh, you know. Um, I get the idea that it can still work in this kind of format. Just maybe rename it a different kind of thing, like last year, where it was renamed like uh, the entire uh, you know period of summer was called Summer Game Fest by Joe Oh my god. Speaking of which, let's start with that. Let's, yeah, not? let's start with this. This I saw brief. I saw like a good chunk of it, but then I went out to go get my hair cut. Let me get these, Dej. Um, a good you have, you have the, Do you have the list? Okay, not entirely, but I can tell you this. Good, the, good, the only two or three good things. Um, Elden Ring, an official gameplay announcement and the release date. Um, new Metal Slug game. I'm sure there was something else in between. But it's I, 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 ha I have some, but let's, let's uh, start but with... But uh, it's, bur it's buried in a sea of, not necessarily mediocrity, but okay announcements at best. And Jeff, not shutting the fuck up about Twitch! Um, okay, to be fair to you... With Amazon Jeff was sponsoring that. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay, I get it. But uh, come on, like, Jeff... Has Jeff should know at this point how a fucking meme he has become when it comes to him shilling stuff. Already from the days of 804, then Pansy from Epic Games, and now this. The man just can't I mean, catch he's, a he's break. He's been doing this for years. Like, po and to be fair, he kind, of, he kind of has to do it because, see, unlike something like, you know, E3 as a whole or Tokyo Game Show, a lot of this does come from his own company's funds here and there. And Sometimes you need a good sponsor for that, which unfortunately can require you to constantly shield their products, whether or not you I care just, about I just, it. I just feel like we didn't need so we didn't need Jeff Goldblum as much as I love that. No, game. absolutely like, not. Stop getting celebrities in your stuff. I know you want gaming to be taken serious as a media. Get the idea, Jeff Goldblum just doesn't care anymore on a lot of things because it reminded me scarily of his advertisement campaign for Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom, where he was heavily promoting. It was like, "Hi Taiwan, I'm in the movie," and then he's like there for five minutes, spruce between the beginning and oh. the end. To be fair, it may. <laughs> to be fair, the uh, the Jeff Goldblum part made sense because he was there to announce Jurassic World Evolution, Evolution Two. Evolution Yeah. Well, I'm sure the first Jurassic World Evolution is a good game. It's not so for hey. me, but I'm sure it's fine for you yeah, know, fans I'm, of Jess, you know. Oh, okay. okay. Let, let me put it like this: Summer Games Fest was a good opener for E3. It wasn't the best show. And Lord knows it set the stage more than we could have imagined it did. Again, but we I also have a good call by bad. having stuff like the Elden Ring announcement at the yeah, very I, end. Yeah, I actually, I want, I want your opinion on that since you're the Souls guy. Oh. Okay, it's uh, I'm 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 honestly just interested to see what Miyazaki is doing with these different ideas again. Steeds are thing now, okay, <laughs> for your main character, um, but uh, we'll have to see how it goes on. Okay, I don't know all the details right now, but I'm optimistic from what I've seen. That's the the, the short version. Uh, I I just so to me, pardon my ignorance. It just looks yeah. This kind of looks like a, a from soft game. Uh, more, more modern. Remember that these guys were working already from like the PS1 era. Also, on a, on a, on a similar yet different note, I hope the game gets released soon enough so George R. R. Martin can go back and finish the books. Jesus Christ. That's never gonna happen. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> you, but you evil Santa, go and finish the books. <laughs> I don't forget, guys, a Monster Hunter showed up at uh, Summer Games Fest. We'll, 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 we'll talk more about that. But, we'll, we'll, we'll. What, what, what about you? What did you think of Elden Ring? 
Do me? It. I kind of felt like, oh, it looks like another From Software game. <laughs> yep, I, because I I've never played a Souls game. <laughs> That and I don't feel like the trailer showed us much. Now, granted, I get that Soul Sands are probably excited by it. CTO, for example. It's, but, it's uh, also drove by it's much, much more than what we have been shown so far. So, <laughs> it's uh, the 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 ratio is stacked in favor. Yeah, you know, I mean, honestly, people were excited by it. I was fine with it. It just didn't really speak to me that much. Like, I think the thing. There was something that spoke to me more during that. Uh, At, thing. Was it Metal Slug Tactics? Yeah, like you said, the new Metal Slug yeah, game. It was, Again, it was Metal Slug Tactics and the Jurassic World Evolution. Again, it's taking game. a different approach, but it did, did as an like XCOM clone with the sprite work of Metal Slug. It can easily work. I'm definitely keeping an eye out on it. I okay. I I wanted a new Metal Slug game, so when I first saw, it, I was like, yeah. Then I saw it as a tactics game, I was like, not like this. But then I, I grew. I. I it grew on me. Also, like, cool. also, Theo has it, amps now. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what's? It, it's funny. I was watching a reaction video to Metal Slug, and one of the guys said, "So about having not having an advanced war game for a, a decade." <laughs> Irony. Boy, that but, aged uh, poorly. But uh, what about you, Dash? What do you think of Joe Joe Keely's show? Eh. It was it was cool that we had a, a snippet of the Sonic Symphony, which is happening tomorrow at the time of this recording. To and it, unfortunately, it caused Sonic Unleashed to trend, and that was something. I guess oh, it's no that was another thing I liked. Yeah, the Sonic bit. Yeah. All right. So. Any, any, oh wait, wait, Kojima. Death right, Stranding. Death Stranding. Death Stranding. Oh, right, extended Death director's cut. They okay. finally, they did it. We Our petitions were heard. They released the Kojima cut. Not just that, uh, okay. Um, I'm sorry. Call, calling these, these updated version the director's cut is kind of cute. It's not the first time a game is called the director's cut. Sonic Adventure. Version. Not just Resident the, Evil. And uh, if I recall correctly, also Deadly Premonition. Yes, Deadly Premonition had the director's cut. So it's not the joke about, oh, it's, it's the director's cut because it looks like a movie. Um... Is only relative in making it, but we'll have to see how much of content because the trailer that they showed was clearly just a fluff. They were taking the piece out of out of Metal Slug, um, sorry, Metal Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, cause I was like, is this lead, is this supposed to be a Metal Gear reference? Uh, I've never played Death Stranding. How similar to Metal no, Gear? Okay, is it? okay, no, not it's by not really a lot. It, it contains similar. elements similar to MGS Five in some kind of way. But it's kind of still its own beast. The trailer that they show for the director's cut do showcase elements a bit more similar. But again, I, I get the idea they were just taking the piece, especially with the orange box and everything. But it's only speculation. We will see only when the game actually comes out if it's really if it really has something different or it's just that upscaled for the PS5 version. All right. Was there anything else from Summer Games Fest that interested you? There were a few indie games that were interesting, but I can't recall them. I mean, I mean, I have I have the list right here. I probably should just like I said. Uh, uh, yeah, that would probably help. Like I said, uh, it's it, even if they were not uh, like the most interesting things. Uh, I there wasn't any particular game for it correctly, but I particularly hated. The, oh, well, oh, the wait, one exception. I I, okay, the one exception that made me roll my eyes was having a two B costume for Fall Guys. Don't get it. And now we're going to see 2B porn in the Fall Guys suit. Yeah. Of no, we so are. Are. <laughs> someone said, someone co was complaining about it, and I was, and I just posted that smug Frieza picture. <laughs> finally, finally, someone can actually cater to their specific kinks on the internet. Hurrah. Okay, um, anyway, now I remember there was another game. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. I think I remember hearing that, but I forgot what it's about. Uh, Wait, it's was that was it, the, was it the Gearbox off. game? All it's right, th that's the that's the the Borderlands spin-off, right? Uh, well, di di despite despite the particular developer Gearbox being behind it, it does look interesting. That's the thing. Borderlands it's just is a CGI trailer. That's the thing that Borderlands uh, has like it gives a lot love hate relationship to 
even his player base. Because on one hand, he generally does have a couple of characters who are interesting, compelling, and generally funny. Um, on the other hand, it has Randy Pitchford, trademark yeah, that's, cringe that, that's, humor. That's, that's the reason why no one... No, to my knowledge, a lot of people do like Gearbox. I mean, like, the Borderlands series. They just For hate the, most part, the yes. creator. No, no, it's not even that dead. Like I said, there are a couple of instances where Randy Pitchford traditional cringe seeps through, you know? Um, but thankfully, it's not all the time, which means we do get actually generally good characters. Like, for intensive purposes, Claptrop is actually a good character, despite being an annoying thing, kind of. But uh, let's let's not dwell too much about it. Is there was anything else uh, from Jeff's show? Uh, and, and it's oh, not there was a bl- there was Blood Hunt, the Anacrusis, and Planet of Lana. Yeah, not much to say on those. Wait, okay, is okay, that okay. wait wait Blood Hunt? Isn't that that spinoff of Vampire the Masquerade? Yes, but the game that's yeah. the sequel that's getting that's in development hell. Yeah, and especially yeah. because it's getting, it, it's not really being appreciated by the fans because we're changing a lot of character designs. For Funnily some enough, reason. I've heard most people say that Blood Hunt was one of the highlights for them at Summer Games Fest. Well, good for them, I suppose. Like I said, very, there wasn't any particular game that I actively hated. Regardless, so yeah, Summer Games Fest came and went. You know what? It was fine. I do think it could have been better. Hey, at, l- at least they, they showed a decent, a decent amount of new games. Uh, that's that's not the same that I can say for Deep Silver. Uh, or or Co- Coach, Co- Coach Media. But like, I'm going in order. Coach Media was like immediately after, and just to mention it quickly because I don't want to do them too much. It's like an hour of nothing! It's mostly interviews with developers that can stumble through their words like I'm probably doing right now. An hour entirely <laughs> like this for well, a professional. Well, well, you're, you're on a blue zone channel, so it comes it's not even that zone. edge. For, imagine I'm like I'm not getting paid for this shit. You know, imagine <laughs> a professional, you know, developer having to explain in an interview their game, and most of them it's just like a PR answer, like oh, we want to keep the game accessible for people, but we want to provide a decent challenge. You know, like. So it's, admit, it's stuff that you hear like, like cardboard cereal. <laughs> so I'll admit, I never got around to see. Hey, there's that. nothing, Jova. There's literally almost nothing. There's like two or three minutes in total new footage that you might be interested in. There are like a couple of interesting new games to show, like the space, uh, um, the, the sci fi, like Souls like game, I forgot its title. But again, you might as well just watch a trailer on YouTube because the conference itself is only about these fucking interviews that go absolutely nowhere. So, moving on. Alright, uh, so, uh, I guess we go on that, to Ubisoft. No, no, wait, no, wait, hold on. There was Devolver Digital. Their show was good. No, wait, let's talk about them after Ubisoft, trust me. You mean in general? Well, I haven't much to say anyway, Dej, because I, the only thing, the game announcements were fine, but I can tell you that we were a bit more. So, not so far, but I mean, you know, more less in quality than the previous years. I have to yeah, I, I, I think it had to do with current events. Cause I did watch oh, yeah. the behind the scenes video that they put in the credits. I'm like, I liked it, but like, yeah, you can tell that this they year had a different was story. Like, I bet they, 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 they had a different story. Yeah, it's similar to that. It was all a dream. It was all that season of. It's like that season of South Park. We were actually aff- affli- afflicted by the, the American election. But, uh, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Even the games we announced wasn't in particular anything interesting. If anything, limited the run games had more interesting announcements, but we'll get to it. So let's get instead to Ubisoft. All right, so I'm oh, going to use the bathroom. Boy. You guys go ahead. Well, yeah, we, we had an uh, entire commentary for that, but to sum it up, um, the, the, pre- um, the premise alone was alienating, like me and Jova mentioned. There was no, uh, we were confirmed we were not going to talk about Skull and Bones, uh, you know. We knew we were going to talk about uh, um, Tom Clancy by a match because we were talking about the new uh, Rainbow Six game. Uh, we learned kind of at the last minute that Prince of Persia wasn't going to show, yeah. and I do mean last minute to explain yeah, where it yeah. happened after our predictions video. But the saving grace did. was actually knewing about uh, the Marpas Revy sequel. Like I mentioned in the commentary, and that got leaked. I and, and, argue and got leaked it would have been much more effective if we didn't if we, it didn't got leaked. I'm kind of sad that it didn't because it probably would have 
left things on a more positive note, but because because instead we would know it was coming by. Oh, okay, there it is. It's fine. Although, although, although there is one caveat to you, though. Because Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope showed up at Nintendo Z3, we arguably have the case where it didn't even need to show up at Ubisoft. I mean, yeah, 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 I, I do, I do get why. Mario Plus uh, Rabbit uh, 2, the sequel, sorry. AKA, AKA, yeah, it does. okay, let me put it like this, AKA the only reason to check out the C3, because I said it before when we commented it, but I'll say it again. Most of Ubisoft just felt like a pre-show before things actually got it started with Mario Plus Rabbits 2, and then petered out again with a CGI-only trailer of an Avatar game. Okay, okay, I, I, I have to mention this. Avatar. I'm actually recording uh, the the, fir the the actual first game that Ubisoft did uh, as a, the tie-in to the um, to the actual movie. Wait, it's the, uh, 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 oh right, James Cameron's that, Avatar: The Game. You remember? They, that's why they have the license. Um, it's fine for what he wants to do so but I'm, I have to admit I'm kind of interested to see what this new Avatar game does uh, even I in just I a more curiosity to, way I think I heard that this new Avatar game is supposed to be a first person shooter even though we saw footage that suggested third person action but yeah goody first person shooter for Avatar ooh but, I, I wouldn't uh, even put it past you know, you know what I'll, I'll give him this it'll probably come out before Avatar 2 well, actually, well, it's supposed, yeah, it's supposed to, come out. to come out it's, next it's year. I wouldn't be too surprised if they're aiming for some, uh, something like a simultaneous release with the movie to boost the marketing to the max. Oh my god, can you imagine if this thing actually is a movie tying game? Like, you know. Okay, it if I recall correctly, we did mention that it's a standalone still. The, the first game that they did yeah. is a prequel to the first movie, but it's not really in canon, anyway, as far as I know. Um, again, still recording, we'll have to see through the end of it. But, but okay, 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 you know what, to be fair, let's talk about the yeah. whole show in general here. So immediately they start off with... Oh, uh, what else? Rainbow Six. Tom like, Clancy! Like I mentioned in the like, commentary, okay. this Rainbow God. Six actually looks more interesting than all the previous one, at least from my perspective, because I'm normally not into this kind of game, so at least the more supernatural elements for the enemies do does make things more interesting to me. Let me sum up the pattern. We dared to hope that Ubisoft were learning with this Rainbow Six Siege game looking good, only to then be disappointed, because then after that, they go into Rocksmith Plus. Wait, but, but, but I just want to say this about Rainbow Six. What, what what's it called? The uh, extraction. extraction. Because it, it was supposed to be called quarantine. Yes, to, yeah. but uh, as you can imagine, <laughs> things happen. So we is that is that the to. game that looks like haste too? No, yes. it, it actually has more in common with Death Stranding, if anything. Well, no, 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 Tio. I, I get what he means, though. First person, you get all this weird and wacky stuff. Although, admittedly, this but time it's not connected not to drugs. drugs. Instead, instead, this goop that transforms people into these supernatural beings. Again, it's more similar to, say, Resident Evil, if you want another comparison. Umbrella Corpse, if you want. Like I yeah. said, Rainbow Six uh, uh, Extraction is fine. Still not for me, but this is the one that I'm willing to give more of a shot than the previous ones. So then but after that came a service. No, it's not it's a game. Not even, it's, it's not a even service. a game. It's a, you know, learn your guitar type of app. Which oh, is, Aerosmith? Uh, no, Rocksmith no, no. Plus. Ro Rocksmith uh, Plus is it's, what it's It's called. a neat idea on paper. I still argue that. But I get the idea that the, the timing is still not right, probably. Okay, okay, and I'm not okay. sure how much helpful it will be. Here's the biggest problem with the Ubisoft show. The pacing drag. So even on something that seemed like it could be useful like Rocksmith Plus, it wasted so much time. So much of like, your time. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So let me put it like this. I think you can count the amount of stuff actually announced at Ubisoft on the two of your hands. That is how little stuff was announced. Yet they managed to drag it out. Like they always do. So, after Rocksmith Plus, we got Riders Republic, which... Uh, still coming out. 
Yeah, like, <laughs> that's the thing. Some of us thought it was already out, but no, yeah. no, it's not. And honestly, I'm a bit iffy on how it looks like. I'm sure it'll be fun to people into that stuff. But like I said with Ubisoft, the problem with a lot of their game announcements was that it feels like it was of games that you have to be diehard fans of a series of and haven't abandoned to be so much as interested in, let alone want to buy it. I'm just curious as to why they showed Rainbow Six twice in two because separate that's things. Because that's the thing, that uh, Siege is still technically going on these days, so it's receiving an extra an out, new update with a new um, type of operator, hence why they showcase the, the, the actual uh, spotlight uh, and with the animated short uh, afterward. But I do agree, they probably could have separated those two into like one as a standalone yeah. announcement. Because like, I was just confused, I was like, wait, didn't you just talk about this? Uh, yeah. But uh, anyway, we got the Rock Smith, Rock Smith, we got the, the sport game, which I'm like I mentioned in the pre conference is just um, when Ubisoft talks about sport game, they just look so boring to me. Um, Even more boring than EA, amazingly. At least EA tried to do something with the journey story. Like, this one d seems to be just on surface level, but whatever. Then they had, again, Rainbow Six uh, Siege update. Um, then they had so, talk, the fair it was at this point we talked about Far Cry. Um, but okay, they, I, they, I, I they won't lie. Okay, after seeing that at the Microsoft press conference, I'm interested in it. Okay, the Microsoft conference showcased the DLC package, if I recall correctly. The Ubisoft conference showcased instead a cutscene from the game that showcased how the villain, played by Giancarlo Esposito, manages to be frightening despite being oh so quirky, like most of the recent. Far Cry villains tend to be. Um, no, so there no, is Far that. Cry. The, the Microsoft didn't show off the DLC. It was just he the Gus receives a phone call. All of a sudden, it's like, "What are you going to do if I'm dead?" And, yeah, and, and whatnot. Yeah. So I was like, "That, that was a good trailer." I'm, I'm, Actually, I'm that's never that's from that Java edge. If I recall correctly, it's yeah, it's the Microsoft conference where the the yeah. Far Cry Six portion is talking about also the DLC of the game, which are mini campaigns where you retread the events from Far Cry Three, Four, okay. and Five while playing as their respective villains. Can I just point this out? It seems like Ubisoft tradition to always show the lamer version of a game they're working on, trailer-wise, their in own their own conference. conference, and then have another conference show off the better trailer of it. Mario plus so, Rabbit Sparks of Hope being the sole exception this which year. Which makes you it's, wonder why you even have your own press conference if that's what you're gonna do. Honestly, yeah, he, because again, Mario plus Rabbit okay, 2 was shown It's a Nintendo good segue TV. because we talk about everything else except one thing. The ego, because right at the very end, right before the Avatar announcement, gives Gilmont, of course, descends from the heavens to give us his blessing as gamers and telling yeah. us how we're such an important part and how we're helping. And we won't get rid of all the problematic people in our country. Uh, just hey. okay, look, look. I don't know Eves Gilmont enough to say anything completely substantial. But it is still iffy the fact that this guy has such a huge ego and has this like smile about it that just makes it it's that kind of unpleasant smile that yes, it might be genuine, but you're just feeling a bit awkward about it in the same room with that. I just wanna point something out that of all the games that they let us know wouldn't be there, they didn't bother to warn us that Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah, that's 2 also too. Be they didn't and Skull and Bones. No, no, that's the thing. Dej, Dej, we mentioned this in the commentary too. Skull and Bones and Priest of Persia were mentioned to not be there, but Beyond Good Evil had no such warning. So, of course, one should expect to be too short there. Am I right? No, like, I, was oh, like, I was not expecting that to show up after and so left. That, that game, I'm, I'm telling you, that game is going to be rebooted again. It's going to be the third reboot. Oh, man. Do you think they'll make it a sequel again this yeah, time? Yeah, ho hopefully it'll be the game people actually want, not this weird open world game. Mega what, what, what were they trying to do again? Okay, Much that's you, you haven't hate... played the first game. The first game was kind of like open world. Oh, 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 oh I'm, I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. To, yeah, to I mean, some, yeah, it was, but I'm talk. Well, I'm talking about the typical Ubisoft affair because, like, you you can ride a spaceship and whatnot. It's like, uh, no, okay, I don't, I don't think. What that's, that's what just referring want. to is the typical bloated open world stuff that Ubisoft have grown a hard on for. And speaking of which, 
Yeah, Watch Dogs 3 ended up being just okay. Despite all the hype that game had going for it, it didn't turn out as amazing as we'd hoped. What Typical year Ubisoft. was that showing off at? Was it 2019? I think Are so. You, I think we also got to see some stuff of it in an Ubisoft forward in 2020, but yeah. Uh, there like, there I mean, was a con uh, that I went through that actually did showcase in 2019 a live demo of it. To, ref to so. refresh your memory, Dej, Watch Dogs 3 was literally the saving grace of Ubisoft's E3 showing of 2019, which, as we went over, was horrible. Quite possibly Ubisoft's worse in quite some time. But, okay, we, we're deemed a bit too much, yeah. I argue. D again, Basically, it's... Ubisoft was Ubisoft. Oh, by the way, Just Dance 2022 came out. And without the, the musical the number! Do, without the music... How fucking dare you? Good. <laughs> but, uh... But okay, no, but that's but, that, but that's pretty much it. Uh, next, uh, who's next, please? Uh, I I think Microsoft. it's Microsoft. Okay. okay, so oh wait 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 we ignore that snowboarding game that they showed off. That looked nice. Shredders. Yeah. Whatever. Shredders. Yeah. They, they, they so okay, next time let's go to the Microsoft and Bethesda show, and I honestly do have to wonder, did somebody switch the essence of Microsoft with most different companies? Because Microsoft, they came to play, and... Joe, well, it's, the, it's the magic of Todd Howard. His mere presence was enough to make... Well, well uh, if, I, if I had to give Microsoft some leeway, every year for since, I want to say, 2015, they've been getting consistently good shows. The problem is, mm. it's like, like, oh, look at all these cool games that we're going to get on our PlayStations and PCs instead of Xbox. A lot okay, of third okay, parties, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. To call them good shows is debatable. Good in the sense that, oh, we're showing off stuff that you'll get to play, fine. But in terms of actually, you know, building confidence in their own brand or the console outside of Games Pass, I would argue they weren't. Well, that I am disappointed changed. that I, I'm disappointed that we didn't see Goku this year. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see the Nintendo Direct instead. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait! Hold on. Were you expecting something with Goku at this? Well, uh, you did mention, yeah, because we we saw Dragon Ball Z Kakarot a previous year. Then before that, we saw Jump, Jump Force, Force, and then yeah. Dragon. In 2017, uh, we saw Fighters. But uh, yeah, okay. Honestly, though. Microsoft, for the first time in years, managed to make a conference that actually could get people pumped for their console. Now, you could also argue it got people more pumped for Games Pass, but all the same, <laughs> they showed a solid release schedule and stuff that will mainly be coming to their consoles and PC. Which, yeah, you know, PC, but Microsoft technically have the market on PC, so win-win for them. Yeah. Uh, they showed off Contraband, which is Bef Todd Howard's new game. Actually, that's Starfield. Uh, uh, Contra oh, right, Contraband, yeah, Starfield. Uh, Contraband, Contraband is a new IP done by Avalanche. Yeah, like yeah, sorry, sorry. And that was just a CGI trailer, and I and do get that it has some care. time to go. But considering how Bethesda's last release, Fallout 76, went... G give I do them, worry if it's... Eh? Give them credit. They're at least trying to fix Fallout 76 now. Poorly, trying I argue. It, that, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's trying it. poorly. Okay, let's go again. What the, I know that Internet Historian is easy to, to quote, reference, and parrot to an extent, but um, compare notes. Um, says no Man's Sky managed to do all the shit that he's doing for free updates with the very little communication to the player base, uh, you know, and it's just genuinely, genuinely just putting out their free updates uh, without any asking anything in return and just letting the people, the hype from the people, buying new copies of the game let uh, be the intro that they were seeking for. Fallout you 76 know, they didn't on make the, the VR version a separate release, which Bethesda did. Fallout 76, on the other hand, um, did manage, as far as I know, to fix most of its bugs. Um, but as a result, it basically implemented a pay-to-win kind of like system to gatekeep a lot of players 
from uh, and in order to spend more money not particularly microtransactions but close enough it, it's uh, like a weird golden pass or something it, it, it's basically like a shady practice on its own without being associated to an easy category the, the point is that yes uh, it's appreciated that at least they're ironing out the bugs and everything but in order to do so they're still they're not implementing these things in a good way compare notes uh, Elder Scrolls Online, for all the fact that I gave it to him, it's manages to have all of his, his expansion like a decent MMO should, without this kind of weird shit in the background. So, yeah. why can't Fallout 76 also have that? Ah, I see. So, I, I, was, I was just... I didn't hear what people were talking about with the game. I was just like, from what but, I was uh, observing. But yeah, Starfield is not saying anything particularly much to me either. I want to understand what the actual gameplay is it is really like sci proper sci-fi elder scrolls like uh like a game and to an extent though like another thing we didn't see anything new about elder scrolls 6 but i guess that had to be expected it's going as well as it was when you first asked them <laughs> thanks todd <laughs> um i'm not buying skyrim again by the way um that's okay microsoft bought it for you uh, uh. <laughs> Yes, yes, they did. That said, though, all things considered, even with the whole Todd Howard stuff, Microsoft gave a pretty good show. Plague Tale Requiem was announced. That's a sequel to Plague Tale. Okay, you know. okay. I know I'm nothing gonna... about this, and again, this is just an issue I have it's with a, It's a neat indie dodge. Uh, okay, my main, not even issue about it is that... Uh, um, while it is in, uh, very impressive in terms of performance and, uh, you know, technical aspects, uh, how it's presented, the art style and everything, it doesn't have that much gameplay in it. Uh, it's mostly a stealth game where your options are very limited and while it is a cool concept, a, a group of peasants that have to fight essentially um, knights in, like, covered in armor, so you have to find clever ways to, you know, to repel them while, you know, trying to repel the plague that is going on. It could have had are a those bit more rats, gameplay. by the way, like running yes, around. Uh, yes, yes, okay. those are actually rats. But I, I was spent already too much. Uh, we are planning on doing a commentary at some point, um, so stay tuned for that as well. Um, uh, we, we mentioned the contraband, new IP from Avalanche. Like I mentioned in the commentary, yes, the trailer did not show anything, but I have good confidence in the developers because it seems it's probably trending the same wheels as stuff like Mad Max or just, or just Cause, so okay. I'm confident Avalanche can deliver a fun product. Really I have good. one major complaint about that trailer, mm -hmm. and this is just with E3 in general. It's all CGI, so it's hard for me to care, and not to mention, that We're trailer... We're talking about Starfield, right? No, Contraband. No, 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 Contraband. Oh! And, and that trailer... Oh, God, yeah, oh it's related Studios. to Starfield as well, but it, it's like... That trailer starts off the same way as the Indiana Jones trailer that they announced months ago. Uh, so I was like, I thought that's what it, w it was showing off. I was like, no, okay. Hey, Dad, le let me re-quote for you what I said in regards to that game. Yep, that's certainly a garage, all right. Mm. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I mean, okay, look. I, I get some teaser trailers, but that was literally nothing. That, that's that's that, that's the point of a teaser trailer. It's supposed to get you excited to know what's what to expect next. But see it Sonic, with see that Sonic one, Forces like... is true. Uh, it's not Sonic Rangers. Oh, oh, okay. You know, even Sonic Rangers was better for what it's given people to talk about. This, yeah. no, it was literally garage. Like hell, even the Starfield trailer gave me more than again just random shots of a garage. Who thinks that that's hyping? Now, maybe if it were tied into some big franchise that's been gone for long, people could get, get hyped for it. Like, like Perfect no. Dark, which I'm surprised that wasn't shown off, along with Fable. They only did, barely got a brief mentioning. Uh, okay, so I'll say this. While Microsoft's show was good, it was not the best. I gave it a B+. Plus. Maybe in hindsight I'd give it a B, but overall it was still one of the better shows. At there there, there not was... Yeah, okay, and, go on. And not just because a lot of the, the other shows were kind of crap, but no, it was legit good. It just wasn't perfect, though. Like, I do feel like it was missing a bit of that push to absolutely get one pumped to buy a console. Like, it, it didn't quite reach Sony 2015 vibes. 
Okay, look, that that Sony's 2015 conference in hindsight. Yes, is yes, 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 yes. Poorly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Like it, it was the dream conference, but hell, some of those games are only just recently come out. Amazing. So I even there to draw, but uh, let's not dwell Final again. Final Fantasy too VII much. is the only good one, or the one that people care about. Any, anyway, um, I I did like the Outer Worlds two trailer because yeah. it was pointing out at how yeah. Yeah, this is an E3. This is how E3 trailers all CGI, show you stuff that aren't in the game, have that warp in the trailer thing. <laughs> it's like that. That's funny. I mean, unfortunately, yeah. it loses points because that was a good chunk of the conference, just showing you CGI, no gameplay. I mean, to be fair, they were showing the right things to get people hyped. But yeah, I would argue that Sony 2015 has sort of contributed to people getting a lot more paranoid and, well, um, not as trusting over CGI fluff, and God, it's a shame that Shenmue 3 turned out as bad as it did. Moving like, on, okay, but, I guess, to be fair, at least No Man's Sky is now good again? But yeah, back to Microsoft. Moving so. on, uh, Strike Psychonauts 2 looks fine for what yeah. he wants to do. It's coming yeah, out he, soon enough anyway. So. I, I need to That's play the first one. Oh yeah, I think you'll stick like with it. The, stick with the PC version, Danger, because the PS4 version emulates the PS2 version, so it's but ugly and that doesn't have that many options. Okay, so I'll just skip that for the time being because I don't have a gaming PC, so... You should need a gaming PC I have a to Mac. play that game just fine. Oh, never mind. Condolences. Yeah, anyway, um, what was also shown was a game called Slime Rancher 2. Yeah, cute. Shira, he yeah. also knows about it. Again, I only heard about it. Uh, um, but it's, uh, again, nice, but it's getting a sequel. Um, what else? Now, yeah, there was also Jack Sparrow and Pirates of the Caribbean True. getting the, added the to next, Sea of Thieves. The next update for Sea of Thieves. Uh, yeah. that, like that, said, that looked really good. Yeah, and like I said, they're actually willing to cooperate with Disney, a company that, from what I've heard, a lot of video game companies tend to have trouble with. So, yeah, kudos, and gee, Disney, are you gonna back out on, you know, the whole Jack Oh, wait, I can actually play on my, I can play Psychonauts on my Mac, neat! But, oh. uh, that's the thing, Joe, I remember, Jack Sparrow is voiced by his Disney Infinity voice actor in this update, J Is so. it James Arnold Taylor? No, you know, no. Uh, ever since, uh, aside from Kingdom Hearts 2, Danger, um, Disney did found a decent uh, J Johnny Depp sound alike for Jack Sparrow's appearances in crossovers like Disney Infinity. Um, so they're, they're using that, uh, and yeah, I think they're using that for for, CL, for the Sea of Thieves update. I, I mean, that, that's a real, I'm not big, I, I'm, I haven't played Sea of Thieves yet, but that Pirates crossover was really well done, and I'm tempted to pick it up just it's, for that. It's doing fine with streamers, uh, if, if that's what you need to know, Dan, meaning that, you know, at least it's, it's, it's keeping it a stable kind of foundation. You ever um, think about how weird of a protagonist Jack Sparrow is by Disney standards? I mean, so I, I some argue, but he's not even the he shouldn't be even be the real protagonist at least for the first three movie. But you know, will which sh I be. disagree with because reasons. But regardless, this has actually gotten me the most interested I've been in CFE since well the game was first announced. Because I'm gonna be honest, CFEs have lost me. And I've heard that did it's been it, getting did a Did it ever call to in the first place? Yes! Yes, it did at first! I was excited for it! A pirate game, Tio! A pirate game! Of course I was... Tio, you have to realize, Jova was more excited for Skull and Bones. <laughs> I know well, that. Okay. I, well, that, I not only I know that, I know that um, a, lot, a couple of years ago, that Jova tried to make us watch a, a pirate game where they use comic sans as their primary font. So, uh, <laughs> wait, wait, what's wrong with Comic Sans? This is not the right it. place to say it, <laughs> because I don't yeah. want to drag this movie, this display TV the longer than it needs to be. Gone. So, uh, but yeah, look, like I said, like, uh, Jack Sparrow and CFUs, I may check out, it's just that again. I was interested in CFUs when it was first announced and this and that, but then, of course, you know, the shenanigans happen, and when the game came out, it was essentially No Man's Sea. And unlike No Man's Sky, I have just never really gotten around back to it. Like, No Man's Sky seemed to have changes that absolutely brought the crowds back. It helps that, you know, they added what they, well, most of what they promised, and even more beyond. 
but with Sea of Thieves, not really. So I might be willing to give it a try. I'll admit, it's sort of like with the recent Sonic X Minecraft uh, thing. I kind of wish it was its own separate thing as opposed to being part of a game I've generally lost interest in. Yeah, I mean, the no Sonic and Minecraft pack is only like, what, six bucks? Well, yeah, but that's like, I mean, again, I don't really want to have to buy Minecraft as a whole, but yeah. it sounds like I would have to. Hey, I must say, though, it, it was nice. So, let's see, aside from that, there was this snowboarding game called Shredders. It, it, to be fair, the announcement was short anyway. Like you said in the commentary, one strength about the Microsoft Coffee is that when the announcements were trying to were seem to be getting too long, they actually cut it off. The one exception being Ports of Horizon 5, since they actually did show extensive gameplay of it. Now, to be fair, it actually looked like interesting for a Forza game. It's one of the more explorative Forza games, so that's nice. Speaking of redemption, Halo Infinite was shown, and reactions to it were more positive. Mind you, it's not like people are going to go blindly and unfaith with this one, but the trailer shown for Halo Infinite showed off the improved visuals, showed off more of a story, which looks to be an interesting bout of an actual evil Master Chief that our Master Chief will have to hunt down as opposed to, you know, Master Chief himself becoming evil. I Wait, find what? you faker. <laughs> it kind of makes me wonder if Free for Free is taking the Wait, piss that, out that's, of that. Wait, that's that's what they're going with? Like, it's an that's, evil uh, Master okay, Chief? I argue that's, that's, what that's, they're the, yeah, with yeah, that's the vibe that they gave from the trailer. The fact that the new Cortana ship has been technically already been spoken of. But Master Chief just got here, so who could have been that did it? <laughs> oh my god, is that what they're going to have is, are it, is this their thing to rectify Halo 5? About, wow, I why is mind. Master <laughs> Chief it's evil? It's like, uh, it was an impersonator. Master Keef. Master Feek. It's like I said, like, it could have been Free for Free taking the piss out of themselves with Halo 5, and who knows? Maybe I'm like the Coalition with Gears... Free for free might be able to turn things around. I'm not gonna hold my breath, but I will admit what I saw of Halo Infinite did look pretty good. Granted, it has changed quite drastically to the point where older fans may not care for it here and there. Phil Spencer but went. Sorry. Go on. It does seem like they are trying for once. Phil Spencer went on stage and talked a bit about uh, the upcoming projects, like the new Perfect Dark, uh, uh, new Fable. Uh, and a couple of other things, and then we concluded with a new IP done by uh, one of the fastest team, the one who did Dishonored <laughs> and the new Prey. The I'm gonna be honest, I mistook this for a Vampire's Masquerade game, because it's essentially another vampire shooter game called Redfall. Okay, Vampire the Masquerade is more roleplay, for lack of a better term. This one he seems to be like a team shooter fighter kind of game, so there is that. True, yeah. But it was really giving me them vibes, but yeah, I get what you mean. It was, it, so, it, yeah. it did look fine, nothing too super spectacular, but again, it looked, it looked fine. Like, so we'll okay. have to see how it actually it's, plays out. I, I need to see gameplay before I... Oh, wait, 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 oh, wait, uh, before I forget, also in Microsoft that was shown, there was a uh, Left 4 Dead Back for Blood. Yeah, the, the 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 new IP that um, the um, the maker, the original makers of Tor Dead are now doing, and Modern Bros is backing up. All That's right, a and transition. Were, we, for we, for, we forgot we forgot Stalker too. Anyone cares? No, 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 True. no, no. no, no. Uh, okay, Stalker I'm part, three, I'm part, I believe it I'm is. Not two, Jova. Uh, the the sequel to Shadow of Chernobyl. Um, oh yeah. Again, I'm not the target, the ideal target, but all the fans that I know personally are super ecstatic about it. So that was neat, even if the game is multiplied to begin with. It, there's not, uh, even if, okay, I have to argue, the Stalker series is, has a more radicated fan base on PC, so it's probably gonna sell more there anyway. Um, but still, people are genuinely interested in this, so it's good for them. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Fort Forza Horizon 5, that looks good. I've never played a Forza game, but that did sell me on the game. So, good good job, Microsoft. Anyway. Yes. Speaking of which, this is a perfect transition to go to Warner Brothers' presentation. Or should I say, the Warner Brothers Left 4 Dead Back 4 Blood presentation. You liars, why didn't you just tell us on the get-go that was what it was going to be? Yeah, so folks... 
Bit of a caveat, when we made our predictions video back then, we were under the assumption that stuff like the Take-Two, Warner Brothers, or Bandai Namco presentations would be, you know, actual presentations instead of things focusing on one or less games. Warner Brothers just focused on Left 4 Dead. I did not see it, but, uh, yeah, I've heard it was Left 4 Dead, alright. Huh. You mean Black Any... for Blood. The game was called Back for Blood. Yes, it's made by the Left 4 Dead team, but... Semantics. So, anyway, after that was the future game show. A lot of indies shown. I can't really remember anything crucial from that show. Uh, it's, it's more... This is more related to the PC gaming show, but I did like this one game called Tinykin, which was basically just, uh puzzle platformer pick more involved Pikmin game mm -hmm. which is like okay. oh that looks good one thing that did they you did the not show gaming show to you what 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 they did I'm not sure remember I was a bit interested in um the um oof, in, I was been in Total War 3 um but they didn't show it but uh, there was a good alternative in the Microsoft conference when you talk about it a new teaser and um, release date for Age of Empires 4. So there is that to compensate. That's good. But aside from that, no, nothing particularly interesting for me in uh, neither the PC game Wait, conference. Wait, did they show that. off a Di Diablo remake? Diablo yeah, they, they do, the one that Vicarious Vision is doing. Yeah, okay, yeah. That, 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 that looks good. It's, uh, it's good to see that Vicarious Vision still has that quality. Mm -hmm. yeah, but... So. Uh, but anyway, again, also future game show, Hercule Craig, again, not much uh, did happen. Where, what did happen, I don't know if it happened before or after the Capcom presentation, there was limited run games. Um, where limited where run Mega, 64, Mega 64 helped edit it. <laughs> okay, everyone talk about the plumbers don't wear ties. Um, Bother port, which yes, it's absolutely insane and I have no idea why they did that. I, I, I've joked this on the SSMB, at this point we might as well get a port of the town with no name while we're at it. Uh, um, I mean, hell, what, they, 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 did they re-release the, what was that, uh, the, the controversial game? Um, yes, uh, yes, I forgot the name. Uh, uh, Fright, not Night, Fright, Trap. Uh, Night Trap. Night Trap, yes, Trap, so yeah. we did it. Oh so, yeah, Night Trap. So at this point, yes, Kaiser Levy will don't give a shit. But to be fair, there were also good announcements, like an actual actual physical versions of the Turbography 16 version of Rondo Blood Castlevania. So it's interesting yes. that Konami is backing this particular thing up. But also the entire Shante series is getting okay. not ju not just physical editions, but you know ports on the current systems. I, I I have I have a complaint about this. Why is the Shante series? Well, my feelings on that series, regardless. Why is it? tied to being a limited release physically. They know, know that there's an audience for it so it just feels pointless to do that. If Limited Run did more or did stuff yeah. like the TurboGrafx 16 for or Run of Blood I wouldn't be complaining but it's like Shantae uh, Double Dragon, Neo the Castlevania stuff it's, they shouldn't be a tied to limited stuff. So, I do get what you mean, though. Like, if Shantae is becoming bigger, let it be physical permanently instead of this limited run game stuff. So, 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 I, I, and they also announced uh, River City Girls 2. Yeah, they're actually franchising a bit more River City Girls. There's the sequel incoming and the po more polished port of the, the, the very first game. Also, they're re-releasing uh, the game that uh, we forwarded for the Blood Rain series, and I can attest to you that uh, ever since the franchise was bought by the new publisher, Ziggurat, which is doing something similar to CHQ Nordic in polishing up old IPs for We Are Forgotten, um, they're doing a decent enough job in uh, remastering these old titles, so that's pretty neat. And hey, it's another reunion of Troy Baker and Laura Bailey playing against each other in the game, so there is that. Um, but... Cool. There, okay, that's it for limited on games, but uh, there was the conference that we didn't talk about in between Microsoft and Warner Bros. Square Enix. Now, oh, apparently, this thing, apparently this thing is loaded by a lot of people, and I'm like, okay, you might not like part of it, but like the worst thing ever. Like, 
I wouldn't call it the worst thing ever, but it was a disappointment. Not as much as Square Z Free of 2018, but okay, it was somewhere in between. Uh, okay, it was somewhere in between the 2018 one and the 2019. So that's one. the big drawback. By a lot of uh, by the, by going through how a lot of people on the internet uh, talk about it, it, almost they talk about it almost as if it was the, the lowest point. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 okay, to be fair, Enix okay, to be fair, until been, Capcom yeah, came about this year, it was kind of a pretty weak one. Okay, like, okay, like you said, like, like Square you Enix said. has never had a good E3, so it's like, this is part uh, of the course. 2019 uh, March of Edge? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The 2019 one was good. Or Again, it's all, it, better. It, it also doesn't. Have, it's also not helped by this weird new stigma that JRPGs are getting ever since uh, January, because apparently someone was thought it was funny to mention after Pirate Mitra got his mash. Whatever. Okay, to be Scrum fair blow, though. Blow, blow. Okay, here here's the main problem with Square stuff. They did a lot of showing without proper telling, which, yeah, Square aren't exactly foreign to you, but it really burned. Especially with the Pixel Final Fantasy remasters. Like, okay, uh, they announced it. We didn't really get to see what will supposedly make these so special. Like, Pro Jared pretty much pointed it out. It felt like they were jerking us around with that announcement. Like, yeah, it's coming. Imagine Pro Jared knowing about jerking around. <laughs> One of those days are long past. The controversies have mainly been dealt with. You know, he's been cleared of the Still, stuff. Still, the point, the point about that regardless. specific collection of games, I really don't understand. It, it was sure it was just a teaser and everything, but they not even. It's not like they said, "Oh, it's out tomorrow, and you have to figure out the rest of the rest of it for yourself." It's probably well, gonna it's be more... still for the rest of the year. You know. That well, that's the thing again. Unlike a company like Nintendo, Square does not guarantee that they will give announcements periodically here. And as we stated before, Square can be pretty terrible with their release cycles or hype cycles or whatnot. So again, I think people figure if you had it, why not just show off a bit of it unless it's literally not that far in development, which is hard to believe with remasters of the original Final Fantasy games. Let's see, other than that though, the announcements were very kind of Marvel heavy. Go. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of it was Gardens of the Galaxy, which did take up a good portion of the, the show. The, the game looks fine. Mm -hmm. I, I just, then, I, I just wish that you could play as the others instead of just Star Lord. But they're making it a more focused game, unlike Avengers. So it's, again, we'll, it's, we'll, it's we'll get to Avengers. I have news on that. <laughs> It's 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 the idea of you being the leader, as in Star Lord, and your decision afflict how the teammates uh, react to you and behave for you. Sure, I get the idea of not having been played. Again, we could have implemented something similar to say Final Fantasy XV, where you control most of the time the leader, but doing a combat you can potentially just switch around. You know, a playable like, I'm character just for that, and then you go I'm back. I'm Rocket's not playable, so considering he's the most popular one of them. Weird. Don't know what anyway, to tell you. Here's another stigma people had about the Square Enix one: the amount of time they that they dedicated to mobile game stuff. And look, I get it, mobile games and all that. But okay, aside feel... from the new ports of the, all yeah. oh, right, there was the mini montage. That was like one section drawer. Tio, no, there was more to it than that. Also, it was a, it a was a one section that contained micro trailers drawer. Like it was like stuck stuck like in the middle, and it lasted no more than say two or two minutes or something. Actually, kind of a bit longer. But Tio, we have to consider also the direct. I'm sorry, the Square Enix show itself was pretty short. So what do you mean, it's Jova? Well, that's the thing with Square. Unlike Nintendo, who feel like they can pack a lot in 40 minutes, Square feel like they're struggling to reach the like finish line. Like, 2018 the Square was short because it was like 15 or something. Regardless, though, I mean, a lot of people feel like the time spent on the mobile stuff could have been spent on, you know, other things here and there. It did feel weird about certain things that weren't there, but I won't go after it too much for what wasn't there. But what was there didn't feel like it sufficed because, hey, we have Black Panther, but tied to the Avengers game. And look, I get it. Square are trying to save that sinking ship. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, you know. Jova, <laughs> can, can, can I say it now? 
Go on. So, the, the Avengers game just recently got an update today at the time of this recording. Oh. And uh, it turns out that uh, they, po they post your IP address on screen. Good job. Yeah, I heard about that. The, the latest patch from Marvel's Avengers now reveals people's IP address. Enjoy getting doxxed. Like, that game cannot win. They better. I, I, I hope they fix that immediately or else they'll be facing lawsuits. Because, oh, man, that's oh, terrible. God. I'll just say this. I feel sorry for that Black Panther segment. It could be interesting, but knowing that it's tied to the Avengers game, I'm cautious at best. And honestly, it's probably not going to be enough to get me to buy Avengers. So... Uh, yeah. uh oh, oh, uh, Jeva, mm -hmm. this is going to make an awkward Christmas gift. What? Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, dads, dads, really? You. That's that's okay. very positive of you, Dad, to assume we're we're all be alive by Christmas. Oh, I, yeah, we will. <laughs> we'll see. Um, regardless, regardless. So that's the thing. Like, yeah, Guardians. Of the, it was very Marvel oriented, and you know, I get it, Marvel stuff. But that's the thing with Square Enix. It. They, uh, like with Ubisoft, Square Enix did not have much to show. And, okay, while the pacing was better, it did again feel a bit abrupt when things just ended all of a sudden. That said, the last game was arguably the most Stranger of Paradise. We also did a commentary on the actual demo. They were that actually said, tanked through it. That said, like I said... I don't think that trailer was a good first impression. It left a lot of people confused. People didn't really like the design of the main character because... Well, it did the job yeah, it was supposed to do, Jova. Yeah. It let people talk about it. So that's, I, I, guess that's, I guess that has, I to, that has to go... That has to count for something in terms of good advertising. Well... <laughs> yeah, debatable. But yeah, people sure memed it, alright? Chaos, chaos, chaos. Okay. Well, hey, that was funny. I, I, I love the memes. Yes, I get what Joba yes. is coming from in a sense of that uh, so far we're still in a good zone. But if the envelope is pushed too much, it may become a bit sour at the very least. I'll just say it like this. The game could definitely have some interesting stuff to show. I just feel that at E3, that was not a good first impression. Like it, Like, I get that we're supposed to be confused about some things, but... It was kind of all over the place and not really that well. And again, I can't fault people for not being interested in the game based off of that first impression. If that first impression wasn't good. First impressions do matter. And honestly, again, the concept itself seems a bit fickle. Like, oh, you're playing through this reimagining of Final Fantasy 1 with Garland, which may or may not even really be the real plot. And again, Square, if you want to hide the real plot, that's fine. Just be careful of how you advertise that game. You're probably still smarting from the backlash of Final Fantasy VII Remake. <laughs> uh, but yeah, look. This E3 was not the bottom of the barrel this year. But it was nowhere near the top either. It felt clumsy, sloppy in some regards, and... Yeah, again, it was nice to see some things in Guardians of the Galaxy. It was probably the best thing shown there. It didn't feel like it cut the mustard. That said, it's better than nothing. I still argue again that uh, things like uh, Coach Media showcase uh, the fan event, uh, um, it can get so much worse. At the very least, they were new game <laughs> announcement and was, you know, actual engaging content. But I suppose the counter argument is that when you have to compare it to something as terrible as Koch. Well, Jova, well, Jova, if a lot of people keep saying that it's bottom of battle, I do have to compare it what I do believe it actually is at the bottom of battle. Thank you. You know what? You know what? Fair enough, because the people are saying that it was the worst show this year. But no, uh, they did not see stuff like Koch Meteor and Gearbox. Okay, we're not we're not too far from the end, so let's just condense uh, free conference into one argument because it's basically what it is: Gearbox, yeah. Capcom, and Banco. So um, the no, no, Red, no, no, wait, no, no, did Red Pitchfork get arrested? Oh, hold on, hold on, Jova. Sure. Capcom deserves its own. Bit. Okay, that's the thing, Jova. Yes, they did show different things and more games than just talking about one, but the concept is the same. Conference, but sure, unlike Warner Bros, we were kind of, you know, told what we were going to talk about, but it still didn't change the fact that they spent like half an hour each 
talking about the very little things, uh, you know, um, <laughs> without any actual concrete new announcement. Gearbox has this distinction of also masturbating over Andy Pitchford's ego, which... <sighs> If you've been on the internet for more than five minutes, you know that this guy is definitely someone you should not massage in terms of ego. Banco, at least, was a more soft than one because we just talked about their new, uh, the new game in the Dark Chapters uh, anthology, Dark Pictures anthology. A game that uh, seems interesting as a premise. Uh, you're a bunch of soldiers during the Iraq war trapped in an evil church stuck by demons. It's done by the same people again they did. Uh, until dawn, so there's probably a similar premise that might look interesting. Capcom instead talked, uh, as we talked also about in our commentary, talked about Ace Attorney first, Monster Hunter in the middle, which, as Dad pointed out, Monster Hunter was also talked about. In, no, in it, the, it, the it, it, they showed off the Resident Evil Eight. The, the, like it's getting yeah, DLC. Yeah, they told yes, cool. we're getting yeah. DLC, and we we totally were not planning it in the first place. But it was your feedback that convinced us. Yeah. To do it. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I'm sorry. That did not cut it at all, and that was just a <laughs> dick move. So let me get this straight. You you practically already announced Resident Evil Eight was getting DLC, and your announcement. Is of an announcement, like we're yeah we're having DLC. We have we'll nothing to show later. because the game literally came out. Wait, when did the game okay. come out? Um, recently, actually, May. I get the idea. Yeah, the why. game literally just came out. So yeah, I will yeah. say this, Dad. I do believe what we could have done is that uh, it, they probably must have had already an idea on what they want to structure DLC. So while not saying an absolute order in which they put things, have like a checklist and say we're doing DLC among these themes, you know. Uh, yeah. Without like, even seriously. picture, ju just similar. Remember, they did a screen and say DLC is development. We could have done just a small checklist and say, oh, there's one about Heisenberg, there's one about Lady Dimitrescu, there's one about Chris Redfield, you know, there's one where Hank shows up and fucks everything again. Um, but, but yeah, uh, I mean, seriously, it was such a nothing announcement. And it just feels borderline insulting. Like, don't even bother if all you're going to do is just roast about how, oh, this game did great here and there, yada, yada, yada. I mean, yada. it's good. The fact that the game is still is sold and is still selling, it's, you know, fine. But uh, Okay, um, let me put it like this. If the Capcom show had been more substantial, I probably wouldn't be ragging on the Resident Evil 8 stuff as much. But, given what they actually had to show for the Capcom show, no. Yeah, well, trust me. Mention. They it did took talk a, a bit. There was a cross, cross promotion between the two Monster Hunter games and Parmly stuff. And oh, actual, guys, 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 the Monster Hunter game from Summer Games just came back for the Capcom. To be fair, they did showcase new stuff in this one. Because, uh, again, the cross promotion for both from between Rise and Stories 2, like the fucking breeding. Um, and a bit of story mod from, from uh, st Stories 2. Then they showcased quite a lengthy section from the Greatest Attorney duology, which I which um, I ignored because they said, "Oh, uh, it contains spider swords." Did you really uh, miss the part where Naruto does? I'm sorry, uh, yeah, Naruto does. Um, I am uh, mutinous. No, no, no. And Rose answers punches a Terminator in the face. Uh, really, Dad? You miss only the good parts. Uh, um, I mean, yeah, yeah, I want to see that for myself. <laughs> uh, but, uh, oh, 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 okay, I'll just say it right now again. If it feels like such a monkey's paw. For the first time, Capcom were actually giving Ace Attorney top priority treatment to the point where it actually got a sizable amount at their E3 show. The problem was that I can't call it a great show just because of that, because the show as a whole had no reason to exist. Had no reason to exist. Uh, all right, like, all right. we didn't need to get as much as we saw about great Ace Attorney. Like, don't get me wrong, it was nice, but to the point where we even got minor spoilers... Uh, I don't feel like we really needed it. It was nice that we got it, but we didn't need it. And what do they have after that? Esports. Esports talks as their big finale for the show. Like, if you really have to talk about esports, maybe have like a snippet of it in the middle of the show. Don't have that be your big closure. You're just jerking people around at that point. So, I'm not going to complain about the quality of the press conference because, yeah, how, how they present some things. <gasps> Sorry, it wasn't good, but I was told we were warned in advance. Do not expect much. Yeah, it was I just actually, a, it was just a brief summary of what we're get, getting soon. I was actually uh, lucky to get in with lower expectations, but I do get the idea that um, you know, like 
a bit slightly a bit more communication might have sufficed a bit more. Yes. Like, let me put it like okay, okay, okay. Let me put it like this. Capcom was the kind of show that even with expectations set, they still managed to disappoint people. And I do think yeah. that consumers were in the right to be disappointed by this because yes, we knew what we were getting, but what we got was somehow even less. Like Resident Evil Eight was there. Except not really. Nothing new was even shown. Monster Hunter stuff was there, even though it was already shown in Summer Games Fest and will be shown later in Nintendo's Which one. has, honestly, and the fact that they kept showing Monster Hunter Stories 2 kind of has the same energy of Ubisoft showing up, showing their games. But yeah, it's like... and yeah, there I'm was sure there it's going to be a good game, but I, Again. I need to wait till Reception comes out. I'm just, again, it speaks volumes that the most new stuff we got was out of an Ace Attorney game. Like, I love Ace Attorney as much as the next guy, but those can be very spoiler heavy. So when you have to resort to showing off that much content from Ace Attorney, which is, I mean, yeah, the concept of it is simple enough. What happened? And, hey, you want to know what wasn't mentioned that would show up, but did show up? The esports talk stuff. That didn't need to be a part of the E3 show. Like if, if how uh, long they better yet, if it. you're going to show off, talk about esports. I was expecting. Okay, are you going to show release a new character for Street Fighter Five or have the announcement, or were you going to show off who the final character is because you've been keeping this on wraps for? And but not by next month, it's going to be a year. Jesus, but nope. It was just esports talk, esports talk. Well, like we had some people, ha we even, even we had some crazy expectations. Like, oh, they're gonna show off a new Marvel. Danger, danger, go. danger! It's the, it's like the situation with the Capra all over again for Ultra Street Fighter Four. Don't get still, you know, too excited for yeah. this one too. Yeah, it's like people were yeah. like, oh, are we gonna are we going to see a new Marvel vs. Capcom game like Maximilian Dodd was hoping for? Or are we going to see a new? I I don't, I don't know. I guess. Maybe we probably should have kept more okay. realistic. What I would argue, Danger, is that uh, this being the anniversary, even if I personally don't care about it, if this being the anniversary of Mega Man Battle Network, it could have been a good spot to announce uh, a new collection if it's assuming that it's happening, mind you. Yeah, um, but they did, but yeah, they did warn us in advance, like months ago. Be patient because of the state of the world right now. They had to like, okay, put I, on some things. They probably also, could have just reminded us about it. It's like, yes, don't worry. We still haven't forgotten, okay. but just please be Considering patient. Considering how Battle Network is also at least decently famous in Japan, I wouldn't to be sur surprised if, if there is something to be announced. It's announced at Tokyo Game Show during September. Uh. I'll just say what I said before. We can talk about how much people may have had their expectations high or low, but Capcom did screw the pooch on this one. Like, again, even when they warned people... We, okay, look, I, I would honestly argue that even if you went in with level expectations, that show was disappointing. Resident Evil 8's content there was vaporware. The Mo Monster Hunter stuff for the other game was just costumes. I and can tell you, Jova, Monster Hunter, like, he's actually know a couple of them. Monster Hunter fans get excited about everything that gets announced, literally everything. So, show them a trailer and they get hyped. And you know what? Okay, more power to them, but it's not substantial to make your own E-free show. Like, Capcom literally got a host, got a studio, shot from multiple and, camera and, and angles she, And she stressed you. as Claire Redfield as well. Yeah, and like you said, they had a terrible camera direction for some fucking reason. And yet, what they had nothing, nothing new to show us. Like, and again, the latter two announcements, the Monster Hunter Stories Two and Greatest Attorney stuff, could have all been shown at the Nintendo E3. Yeah, but anyway, like like we already mentioned, condensing also Banco and uh, Gearbox because again they have a similar, a similar structure. Already talked oh, about God, it. We're going Red, to end on a high note then. Right, yes. right. The Peach Short can you know just continue do whatever he wants. So. Please get, Please, like get Hope, Please get arrested. Please get arrested. Hopefully, getting step, hopefully stepping on multiple Legos. We'll see what <laughs> happens. But let's talk about the ending notes. Uh, technically speaking, of E3. I know that there's Wait, the whole before, thing. Before what? we talk about Nintendo, was there, was there any other things that you guys were interested in E3 that we didn't get the chance to cover? 
The cockpit. Okay, uh, no, 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 he didn't. He didn't show up for that. There was the He Man. Uh, that, that's thing. not video games, Jova. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it, it, was, it was still shown off during the Summer Games Fest stuff, where Netflix, because like that's where we got the announcement of Castlevania uh, getting a spin-off show well, focusing on the, Richter. Um, and there just, is and technically the Nintendo show. Treehouse. And there's technically Nintendo Treehouse where No More Heroes Free was shown. It looks good. Um, but if you're talking about something particularly absent uh, that I wish will show up, uh, the Cuphead you'll see. Like, okay, I so you have it, to uh, realize that that's it, it has been it, it has been delayed multiple times at this point. And I know that of all games, Cuphead is the one that is getting like the one of the most excruciating development uh, in terms of how things are made. But you are literally you're telling me that you still have nothing to show right now. Look, the 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 sneak clip, the sneak clip that they actually showed about the Netflix series does that look actually pretty good. I will admit when that. When is that coming out? I think it's still this year, but I don't, I don't know actually where. I would also say, Wayne Brady's King King Dice, which is actually kind of cool. Again, I would have to I would have to say between the Cuphead. Um, stuff like The Witcher getting the second season, a lot of other uh, gaming adaptation. Netflix is actually gaining a good momentum in terms in terms of having original content that they actually sponsor. And like Joel mentioned a couple of times, it's also a good occasion for having good video game adaptations, which are more than well, welcome. The the, the pro my issue is that Netflix announces a lot of stuff, but they're not out yet because they were, and they announced that Devil May Cry show back in 2018. Oh, and that, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we haven't seen anything. That the cur- the guy who's working on it announced that. Oh yeah, I'm doing this Far Far Cry Blood Dragon show on Netflix, and here's some footage of it. It's gonna be cool. It's like, where's Devil May Cry, jerk? I mean, not he's not a jerk, but it's like, where is it? Anyway, um, let's end on that high note with Nintendo. Um, Starting off, of course, with the Smash character, so just just to get that out of the way. Yeah, uh, but like I'm recording this. this. It's it, it's be, it's be, yeah. Okay, I will mention in a second. Um, but I'm recording this is before the Mr. Sakurai presents. It's on the 28th. We'll see what happens. What's the slaughterhouse for the B costume? I'm conf- I'm confident that the Lloyd Irving costume will show up yeah. because again, there seem there seem to be a pattern, and you know, Nanko Bandai costume. Uh, but I have to admit, yes. It's been a long while, but I finally get a Smash trailer that I actually do enjoy it, like, al- almost unapologetically. Like, like, don't get me wrong, um, even cho- some of the choices in the past for the Smash rosters has still been um, positively received for me, like Pyra and, uh, Mi- and Min Min. No, I'm talking about the DLC stuff, Jova. Um, Pyra and Min Min, for example, Pyra, Mitra and Min Min. But this one was a genuinely good time that I had. You have to realize that Tekken is my favorite fighting game franchise ever. Well, so I was like ecstatic. That. You're a filthy Dez. casual, Dad. Hey, Dad. It's talking about hey. bottom. Hey, Dad. Uh, I'm, also, what, I'm sorry. What? 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 Fi- what's your favorite fighting game franchise? Um. Okay. Not Mortal Kombat is one I almost played the most. About okay, I was about to say you're the filthy casual. No, because it's Virtual Fighter instead. Hey, hey, t- um, oh, oh, I'm sorry that you play a game that no one cares about anymore. Anyway, at least I know how to input the ladies, combos. Ladies, ladies, uh, ladies. So first, yeah, of all, I was about, first I was about all, to, I was about to mention. I was about to mention. Let's uh, yes. Dead. At least now you'll finally get Tekken X Street Fighter. I, actually, there is news about that. Harada did had to say it wasn't cancelled. It's just the way how it's translated in ca- Japanese made it seem. He said it's been put on hold, not like cancelled. Uh, like the usual, again, Katsuhiro Harada has to save uh, the fucking company because there are poor, dumb people <laughs> in charge of, in this case, translating it, the articles. Magnificent. Yes. Um, but uh, let, let's talk about Strictly. Kazuya Mishima. Like I said, I get the idea, and he actually was supposed to be the original pick, but since his voice actor passed away, they have to rely on the, you know, the, the closest being to it. Honestly, I don't think so. I think the reason why is because he was too difficult to input, unlike Kazuya, who is basically the beginner character. Mm. Personal, personally, and I t- and I made this text message to Terrence way back w- back when Fighters Pass Two was announced and how mm. many characters I wanted Jin. It's fu- it's funny I put uh, Jin and I'm Min Min. Say I, should, this. I should have said Jin. And I kind of prefer Kazuya, if only because. Well, think about. It. 
I've, I'd argue Kazuya Basic. sort of is Go a on. more unique protagonist of a series. Like, and honestly, here's the thing. Even Jin's kind of become a bad guy at this point. But no, Kazuya... Yeah. When he actually yeah. has screen time, like, so, unlike okay, in Tekken so 7, when he was just I sleep the game. Yeah, he's Ugh. the most unique take on the protagonist. He's someone who started off relatively an anti-hero, sort of struggled with it, then became a bad guy. But he Nowadays, sleeps though, on the, he will he, occasionally yeah, he fight slope, for what's better, but only when it suits him off. No, no, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Project Project Cross Zone Two Dead found a way to make him well, at oh, least oh, okay. pacify. Yeah, I'd okay, but that's kind of that's a non-canon crossover game. Games. Like, True, again, he Fair still enough. is technically fighting for his own main uh, profit. Well, that's the thing, Dead. He's are trying worse to take over the against, world. So that's the thing that okay. Okay, oh, Dead, 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 Dead. Dead. Yeah, but that's that, that's yeah. Like that's dead. because he's they're the in his way. In that doesn't way, mean he's Fowl still a until good. Book five of his series, essentially a villain protagonist of sorts. Uh, although I will say it's uh, inter if they really wanted to, they could have made Jin his Echo Fighter because in Tekken Three he has Kazuya's move set, and Devil Jin is his Tekken Three. Pretty attire. much, uh, um, I, 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 I guess. guess there, there seems to be this unwritten rule that DLC characters don't yeah, get they're not allowed to I mean, to Alex is but... technically Steve Sacco. It's right. more... Eh, no, 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 no. She's not an Echo, she's yeah, an Yeah, it's a pilot swap. Like, yeah, it's, it, they're, 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 I, co I consider Echoes and alternate skins to be well, the same thing. No, 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 no. Here's the thing, Dad. Echoes still do get yeah. some slight variances and in some of their And they get very of swaps anyway. Uh... Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, the Equilibrium and Curious the most is when we were going to stick to the golden rule of Tekken by having Kazuya just be voiced in Japanese in all versions of the game. Or for the English and European version, they will get, like I mentioned, Kyle Hebert uh, to reprise the role. I just think they'll, they'll just get his Japanese voice. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking too. Again, one of the strengths, one of the strengths of Tekken is, when, is starting with, I forgot which specific game. Five. They started having um, characters from different uh, nationalities uh, by having voiced by voice actors from said nationality. So Leo, a German character, voiced by a German voice actress, for example. That's pretty much neat. Um, but yeah, that, thank goodness for that's, subtitles. But yeah, uh, but yeah, I mean that. Okay, consider this: the Smash announcement was a great start to an outstanding show. So then, after that was Cruise and Blast. No, 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 no. no. That, 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 that was not cru Cruise and Blast. There was a mini montage about oh, yes, some there was stuff. A yeah, oh, okay, Cruise and Blast. Cruise and Blast was sand Cruise and was sandwiched in the middle of two things. I forgot which other games were not just dance and yeah, life. Just life, life there was also they also showed Life is Strange. Mm -hmm, that is true. Oh yeah, that was the thing that followed up the Smash reveal. Yeah, basically Life is Strange one and two and three all. No, 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 sorry. Life is Strange, the one pack and, the, uh, and the, the new game. Um, they had the neat uh, And then the Guards of the Galaxy as well, then War. Kind of opening. That was. Yeah, although it's a cloud service uh, type yeah. of game. Wait, 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 wait. Has yes, it been confirmed? Uh, the, That's the, article, the articles actually did confirm it. I had to, I had to agree that the director did a poor job in explaining that. Um, uh, we, we also had so Monkey anyway, Ball before though, that. How do you feel about that? I'm not a Monkey Ball fan by, by, by myself, but I know that the fan base has been advocating for you know, at least good ports for a while, and this seems to be on track. Yeah, so because it's that. what people... W it's like, okay, Sega did, pulled the cap contest with Monkey Ball uh, Banana, Banana Blitz. Blitz. They're like, oh, if you buy this, well, it, the, the future of the franchise depends on it, even though Banana Blitz is the game that people hate. So I was like, get... get uh, well, at it. least these uh, these compilations seems to be with yeah. TV titles that people enjoy more. Yeah, and it and it looks like it'll have some new content, so that was good. Uh, now let's talk about where the show went into Mario overdrive Party. because uh, 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 no, <laughs> yes, no, I'm I'm uh, looking at the direct and what they showed in order, so I just want to talk. Yeah, about yeah, that. yeah, of course. The, the, okay, yes. like he said, like he said, I well, hey, hey, you, you know what, you know, you know, it still applies because this is Mario Party Superstars. It's essentially going to be a Mario Party Generation sort of game. 
That's right, boards from past games brought back and refashioned and remade with remixes Original and Original Snake meant by Dutchie, but do not it, steal. And it will, in fact, have full online support. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for buy, spending 60 bucks on the beta for this game with Super Mario Party. Like he Party. said, uh, making, it a, making it a separate game was kind of a mistake. I do believe it would function better as a uh, DLC uh, expansion okay, so to Super Mario Party. Here's the problem idea, with too. Super Mario Party. There are more full... They, could, they couldn't do it. Because okay. Super Mario Party is so sick that you have to use your uh, Joy-Cons. And not to mention, you can't play in handheld mode. So if you own the Switch Lite, you are pretty screwed. And couldn't use, play the extra mode that had it. That way you have to connect your Switches together. To form a table or something like that. Okay. So, like, on a fundamental level, they they basically had to make a new game. Still, um, okay, it's it's still relatively fine. And and so it's all, it's been three years, so it's fine. It's fine for a new game. That's that's, that's still the thing, though. They just very recently added online support for Super Mario Party, so it does really feel kind of like a machine. Or or they were just testing the waters for the beta. That's possibility too. So what came after that, Dad? Uh, after that, we had. We can't show you Metroid Prime Four, but we'll Whoa. show you so here's Metroid, Metroid Five instead. Wait, what? <laughs> well, okay, no, 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 no. Hold on. Let's set up the stage here. Darkened screen. Suddenly, Metroid V, Metroid Five, Metroid Dread, and yes, folks, you are not in a coma. That was, in fact, the same Metroid Dread that was announced back in 2005. Here it is now, almost 16 years later, brought back. Not only that, it's being developed by Mercury Steam in conjunction with the creator of the series himself, Sakamoto. And it looked pretty good. Yeah, I prior I priority the motor one up because I'm, definitely I'm not really a big see. Metroid guy, but I just figured. You know what, people? The, this 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 game looks good and interesting. So so in uh, so how fast did the Amiibos actually sold out? I can't pre-order them. I think it took like a few a free, hours. A few hours, hours minutes. Personal. I'm gonna get yeah probably for for a few minutes. Drove. People tend to get rabid when it comes to pre-ordering Amiibos. Like. Weird. I recall being able to pre-order it until a few hours. Maybe later, maybe if you went to GameStop Any though. I was doing on Amazon. Um, but yeah, the game generally does look interesting, and I want to see where it's going uh, plot wise and to so see what changes we apply to the formula of uh, Samus Returns. So, again, guys, let's place our bets. How's Ridley coming Mecha back? Ridley. This time? No, no, no. Remember Other Um? That Ridley that escapes? They did the. It, they kind of. Well, they they kind of did the. Yeah, they kind of also did the same thing in Fusion, where it was a. Cl they had a clone story in the cryogenic chamber, uh, and the X Parasite cloned that. Uh, Tio, Tio, about that, it's been pretty much retconned that that was the same clone from other M. Yeah, okay. Um, but regardless, uh, I was about regardless, to mention find a way the, like the. It seems that the entire premise is that someone's is stuck on a foreign planet that the Operation doesn't know. And send the petition and send a couple of robots that went rogue. And the trailer did clearly showcase a chosel that has the same um, close uh, of the splinter faction that was shown in the teasers uh, at the end, you know, in the chosen memories of uh, Samuel's Returns. Uh, my theory is meant that the chosel wants Samuel's dead, and among other things, he has a mecha Ridley to unleash a I fe I fe The Federation also kind of wants Samus. Because she's technically the Federation a, war a bunch of. Yeah, yeah, the Federation are a bunch of idiots. Now, thanks to Fusion. <laughs> well, well, gee, okay, the Federation guys, are a bunch of idiots who try to actually breed Metroid of their own. So, here's my fear on how Ridley could come back. Guys, remember how Samus became part Metroid in Fusion and how, you know, now being part Metroid, she could consume X parasites? Mm -hmm. Technically, the X parasite that, you know, killed off the clone Ridley has Ridley's DNA, so. And since Samus consumed that parasite, that means she now has Ridley's oh no, DNA within her. Oh no, I have her, the urge so... to kill my parents. <laughs> They're already I have to revive them and kill them. But, uh, 
That makes me wonder, maybe the evil Chozo is going to extract some DNA from Samus, and from that DNA, Ridley Although will be reborn did, uh, once again with his powers. I think it's powers. like a motto that or at least in articles, that uh, they clearly want to make this like a conclusive story for the particular art we've been building up when it comes to just the Metroids. We really are sure that this is not the end of the franchise, we are yes. going to continue moving forward, but this is just essentially a turning point, kind of like Kingdom Hearts 3 when you get down to it. On that. Which is weird because, look, for as much as we've wanted a sequel, Fusion did feel like a good it's drama. Not really. Really. So it kind of ends on the whole, uh, yeah, it's just technically a war criminal now, you got to resolve that. Well... Well, okay, okay, okay. I mean, honestly, you can pretty much brush that under, oh, Bounty Hunter, she was kind of outside the law anyway already. I also particularly adore the one thing about how our M is not counted as a mainline title, and that's so satisfying. <laughs> yeah, there, there is a one thing. I, I know everyone kind of clowns on Sakamoto for, for what he did with other M, but from my understanding... He's actually a good writer with Family Calm Detective Club out. And I, I just don't know what he's working on that period. Oh. That I genuinely I, don't I, 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 Okay, <laughs> I, every every curator has this off period. I guess that was his. <laughs> oh, and yeah, was a big again, one. and he seems to regret it. And apparently, from what research I looked up, apparently he doesn't hate the Prime games or is jealous because he does praise Retro Studios. It's like, do. He would want them to work on more, but the, the I never got that inkling. It, it's, it's, it's just fa yeah. fans looking for a skin. Yeah, there the, the, there was this common new Bond Legend of Zelda kind of like thing where um, where they believed that the reason why Rem was made was to compete with the Prime series of it. Oh, let Nintendo show you how it's done by having a Japanese team. But whatever. The point is, new Metroid game. It looks it looks interesting. It looks it looks like it plays interesting, especially because. Treehouse showcased an actual demo uh, later on, and the game is coming out very soon, actually. October. So, yeah. Pre -pre it's it, it's the number one pre-ordered game on GameStop right now, post E3, mm -hmm. and it's uh, it, it was the best pre best-selling game on Amazon right now. So people wow. love this game. Um. So yeah, we'll we'll see how that turns out. After that, what was after that, Dad? After, I know a couple of governments. After that was Cruising Blast, which my baby is back. I'm so happy. Okay, it's I, think cruising, back. I thought Cruising Blast was in the Montes uh, before, actually, but whatever. Yeah. Okay. It's like. I literally mentioned that earlier. Sorry. Sorry. It's like, well, I'm finally yeah. happy. It's uh, I, I love Cruising USA. This oh, okay. is so what else? Can Dragon Ball Z about? Kakarot plus a new true, power. True, a, a bunch Which, of, a yeah, bunch that's of new nice. Board, that's so. coming to Switch, uh, uh, and that one's not cloud. No, one, it's, it's truly fine. Yeah, it seems when Bandai Namco has found a way to pour their licensed games onto the Switch without too much sacrificing. So that's fine. Like I said, it all comes down to somebody who gives enough of a crap. It to also get a depends, good like I said, on the port. actual engine used and how the art style is used. But, uh, the, anyway, uh, I think, okay, probably it was something with him, but the next major thing that just dropped out of nowhere is this s duology remake of the first one. Wait, 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 Looks good. It's and they announced new updates. So a new Donk City stage, which makes me wonder. It's like, yeah, the game's probably gonna be released bare bones, like uh, Aces, but we'll have more content throughout the uh, year. Okay, from what I've seen of this game, it looks like it'll have more content to base than Aces did at least. No, no, Aces had a lot of content for it throughout the year okay, for, think, at in launch. Terms in terms of comparison, it seems, but the story mode seems to be a Better yeah, the and and the is. and the CGI intro got leaked, which was two minutes long. So I was like, "Oh, it feels like the Mario sports games on the GameCube era." That's good. Nice. Also, next we had Monster Hunter Stories Two. Again, is, is anyone is, okay? Is, hey, are any of you time. guys buying that? No. Yeah, no. Okay. Are you? We'll see. I, I need to hear. That's the adventure, but he wants to know feedback. Word, word of mouth. Uh, next we had WarioWare. 
I, I, I'm ha- I'm happy because I yep. just played the f- Wario game. Yeah, together. I just played the first one a few months ago, back in April. So, hey, perfect. It's also, it's also, with it's multiple... also interesting that with starting with okay, there were also in, to an extent in the previous games, but starting with Gold, the WarioWare games started to have a more, for lack of a better term, complex story to it, and it seems like complex. we're following up on that on year two. So there is that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it looks good. I, I love the WarioWare characters, and I would love to see them in Mario spinoff games. Which was like, yeah, well, give give Ashley or Mona or Nine Volt some love and put put them in Mario Kart. How about Seven Volt? No. <laughs> Why no, not? Next. Dead? Why anyway, not? next game is Shin Megami Tensei Five, aka Hey, look, it's that uh, it's the game that reminds me of Persona Five. Not <laughs> taken, Dad. Um, but uh, that's it, though. I'm pretty sure that delight. Yeah, it's, it's, it looks it. fine. The new form of protagonist is interesting, and apparently pissed a couple of people off for some reason. Weird. They were they were confused um, if that was a boy or a girl, and they were. Kind of, confused about their sexuality, questioning their sexuality. Who cares? You killing and recruiting demon. That's the point. Uh, Jesus Christ. Dear, dear, dear. People tend to care about whether or not it's fine to jack off to something. Without like he, like he said, this it. type of shit happens with Persona. Normally not with SMT. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, again, yeah. still looks good. Still coming out uh, soon enough. We'll see what happens. Um, uh, I, 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 I'll probably pick it up because from what I've seen, it looks good. And okay, you might want to try the Portal Nocturne first, Danger, just to have a better introduction. Arguably, I mean, it, it doesn't, Again, it doesn't it matter. Looks, this this one looks. The SMT games are not super newcomer, not not in terms of gameplay, but in terms of lore and story, super newcomer friendly. So you might try to start from the best point that you can, especially because. The new, this new version of Nocturne adds some quality of life improvements that you might want to consider. I, I, I really do hope SMT5 does do well, because I know that a lot of people really care about this series, and it's like, hey, what? I'm just, again, I'm just glad to see the series back in full-on 3D on a mainline console I, with I, I, you know, I, proper I, budget behind yeah, it. Yeah, it's like, what if it's sold as well as Persona 5 at launch? That'd be, that'd be nice. So it could be so people can make. So, uh, it'll be a f- Atlas game. I can hear people talk about besides besides making Persona Five their personality on YouTube. But uh, but it's also it's also worth noting that in recent times Atlus has managed to try to step up their game a bit and translate in multi five in text to some of the more recent releases like uh, not the aforementioned Nocturne, Persona Five Striker, and the, even a new version of Catherine. So I wonder if it's gonna happen the same with this one. Hopefully. Um, what that was after that? that give in to despair. <laughs> All right, Danganronpa. <laughs> what you don't like, Danganronpa? No, it, it it's like fine. It. It, well, no, no, okay. honestly, it's fine. It's a very interesting series with a cool concept, a spin on the traditional visual novel mystery, kind of like Mineko. The problem is that again, Spine Chunsoft cannot catch a break. Not catch a break, but you know, cannot. Uh, go around two steps of bef- until fucking things up in some kind of fashion. Again, we are just kind of fresh yeah. of their announcement that they're uh, fucking up the streamers about the game, which you know are one of the primary ways to give publicity to your product. Like, not only that, but Spike Chunsoft have. Well, okay, you probably have heard about the mess that was Dangan Rampa V. Uh, don't tell me anything because I actually yeah. do want to play it myself. I'll just say, punches was, a okay, in the face. Man, what's with all these games <laughs> getting Terminator? Be- Are you guys so only even want to cover Terminator uh, for Gears of War 5? What is wrong with you people? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so James, let me put it like this. At first, people thought Dan Game Rampa Free, and that's an anime, not an actual game, was the biggest problem with the Dan Game Rampa series. Until Dan Game Rampa V Free, the actual third mainline game. Which has, I'll just say it, a terrible ending, and just leave you to see it. For I, I, I hear, I hear that mixed things. Said, that some people love it, some people hate it. So I, I need that, to play that, it for myself to understand advanced, it. Yeah, advanced Dead is polarizing, so be prepared. Yeah. Let me put it like this, Dead. It's best understood if you've played the entire series up yeah. to that point. Mm-hmm. 
But they did include That's they did awesome. include a new neat thing with the board and the Dragon Quest uh, um, type of RPG battles. That is a cute thing. Um, uh, what poor Alter the Spare Girls, please. <laughs> what was after that, Dad? Fatal Frame made on Black Water, which is also yeah. which is multi platform, which makes yeah, me wonder does Nintendo still own no. the rights to this franchise? Like, or? like I said, it's, it seems that Tecmo Koi now has the full reign of VIP again. Which, fine, I guess. Where, where was the Fatal Frame slash Project Z representation in their crossover Musou game? Hmm? Yeah. Then again, we did not even have Guitar Man, and that's a fucking shame, so. <laughs> I mean, I hope, I hope it's good for people because of, hey, more Wii U games. It's at least it's at least like, it's at least it's at least accessible that because again, playing trying to play that on the Wii U is a fucking nightmare on its own. Because, because it's like okay, not now we need a Xenoblade Chronicles X, maybe games in Wario, Nintendo Land, maybe. I, I'd rather you make a sequel and Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Throw that game in the. In the f- <laughs> Burn it. Wait, 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 hold on. You want me to throw that game onto your front door? Well, okay. Those are keys, Joel, another game. Um, but, uh, Next but anyway, what will. Yeah, we'll Doom Eternal, The Ancient Gods Part 1, which is already. Yeah, out. Doom Eternal already had a Switch port, yeah. so it was nice to see that the DLC is also coming. Then the Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Fine yeah. enough, too. Stranger. Strange Brigade, which I don't know. Me neither. Mario plus Rabbits, which we've talked about, looks good. Looking yeah. forward to it. Advance Wars is coming back. It was holy crap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here's a recurring theme of the C three stuff coming back from the dead. I'm talking about mm-hmm. Nintendo C three in particular, like again. And yeah, and it's being done by way forward, much to Deji's dread and my personal interest. Okay, I read online that a couple of people did not like the way that the, the sprites are like redrawn, but I don't the, the, the pro- really see. I, 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 to me, the problem is that how it it's is how they move. It's kind of a bit of a like way forward. How, it's kind of like how they do in Shantae, except weirder. But for the most part, it's fine. I, I like how the, fr- how the army men are free. 3D models, which make them like look like toys. toys. Yeah, which, yeah. Is, which is clever. In order to sanitize a bit more the fact that this series is kind of fucked up. <laughs> it, it, it's like, it's like, it's like it's like it's a war it, game. Like... <laughs> it's like it's a Nintendo okay, game where this... the moment you peel away the cover it's fucked up under it. <laughs> Do you guys fear that they may try to sanitize the game more as in I'm not sure how they can draw that, to be honest. Uh, like Deji just said, it's a war game and... Like the story depends on particular decisions. I'm not sure how big what we can do to make it more kid friendly. I'm just saying some people are worried that they might try and do that. I personally don't think they do that. And hey, just because something's done by Way Four doesn't mean they'll try to make it kid friendly. Mm. Heck, one of their Shantae games was rated T, though that was probably just because that remember that, 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 like that, that wait wait was it Pirates was Curse? No, 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 It was, uh... That was Half Genie Hero, though. I think that was rated T because it included a fan art section. Yeah, I was about to say, Spirit's Curse has the section where this dragon spits out saliva and you sw- and pe- characters swim in it. Also, that one is not rated T. Uh, also, they did the Mummy Demastered, and I'm pretty sure that one is I am rating. Um, but, uh... Uh, but yeah, it's really neat to that Advance Wars is coming back in some fashion. Mm-hmm. Again, like I said, uh, sure, F Zero is not our primary target, but man, I hope at least Golden Sun gets some love as well. You, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I'm convinced that after Mario Golf, uh, Kamelot is going back to that. Yeah, uh, I doubt like re- it. Re- I re- really re- remake it. Golden really? Sun in the uh, in the Octopath style. Here's the thing, Java, in case you um, don't know much about it. Golden Sun is not... It's, it does function kind of like a typical JRPG, but it incorporates Zelda as a mechanic where you get new power-ups and use them to modify the environment to your advantage to traverse the dungeons. So it's a bit more actively involved. But, uh, but yeah, um, so what makes you think that Camelot will be this, back on it as opposed to them just... Like Nintendo is c- catering to Game Boy nostalgia. WarioWare, Metroid, a 2D Metroid, and Advance Wars—games that were all all on the Game Boy. 
Adventure. I suppose to be fair to WarioWare, that's a running I mean, series sure. still, but yeah, I could. But yeah, I mean, I do see what you mean in the pattern. That being it, said, it bring though, F-Zero do you back. think it'll... That, yes, yes. I, I honestly do feel like we're eventually going to get that. I mean, look, if something like Famicom Detective Club, which was, for the most part, Oh, dead, oh, 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 I need to pick that up. Back. Let me know when you pick it up so we can do a discussion video. Together. What, what about Star Tropics? Nobody remembers uh, okay, 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 okay. Star Tropics. Okay, okay, okay. Hear me out. Here's my pitch for a Star Tropics reboot. Y you know that concepts of concept out of Breath of the Wild Link where he looks in the modern world and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just mm -hmm. revamp that to Star Tropics. I mean, at that point, you kind of become you know, um, on, uh, sorry, uh, Earthbound. You know, Star Tropics appeal was if it was set in this tropical like setting. So yeah, but it was still in modern day. So True, a, mo a modern like day Zelda game. It wasn't like smack dab in the middle of civilization still. I mean, I know. mean, true, but I, I'm sure you you can make something work. That's but the still this Earth, Earthbound's Earth right? also an RPG. A tr Star Tropics and Zelda are action adventure the, games. There's also the other problem that it's it's a joke, mostly a joke, but it still rings true in some fashion. Nobody in Nintendo, especially Nintendo Japan probably even remember Star Tropic uh, and probably even less people care about it. It's kind of sad. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, re regardless though, what makes you think that Camelot themselves will be the ones back on the door like, what, 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 what do they have left after the, they done tennis and golf? That's it. That's it. Obviously, Mario no, Soccer. That's the next Frank games, Urza, and that's, that's never Neville coming back. Which that's that. We have we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen what the next level of games are is doing. We'll probably get to know soon enough. It's been a while since Luigi's Mansion Three. I'm confident that uh, they they are busy onto something. So we'll see. Fun fact: Apparently, Mario Strikers was the game that got Nintendo to double down on maintaining a certain image yes. for Mario. Yeah. Apparently, it, it, the game Jova, the game is chock full of things that you will never see again. Like well, I mentioned, I wouldn't say times, never but... see because we have Mario plus Rabbits and Odyssey doing okay. Weird danger, things. danger, again. Waluigi, Victory Taunt, pointing at his crotch. Uh, okay, tell, okay, let me, let, 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 me, let, me t let me tell you this. Mario Plus Rabbit has the, has the word hell used twice. Okay, that, okay. There's a difference between what each word can be considered as swear word in a country. There, there's a character that shoves his ass on the characters if you get close to him. Whatever. The, po the point being, I do believe mm -hmm. Mario Strikers as... Uh, um, the Maurice K stuff for Mario, um, and uh, that's why they just said they had to turn it down. We might see it again in the future. Yeah, who knows? They're like I, I'm, I'm convinced. Like now they're realizing, okay, look, we can't make things safe anymore. Keep, keep the costumes, bro. Those are cool. Yes, keep the costumes because, like I said, the only, the only things that do need to be reworked. Mario Party is coming back. Back the the golf game and aces look good are back. The only things that we need to work on are Paper Mario and Mario and Luigi. <laughs> Mario Luigi is dead. dead. Oh, I uh, never, never, never say never. They can just they. I'm sure they can get guys from uh what's what what, what Alfred. Yeah, they can Alpha just Alpha get the 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 employee. Alpha Dream is dead. Well, well dead. apparently some of the employees got hired by Nintendo to work for them, so maybe they are working on a. But uh, let, let's finish this uh, because yeah, never say never. Let's finish with yeah, what um, they decided to show for last Zelda, uh, Zelda stuff. Uh, Age of Calamity DLC. Does anyone have the game? Nope. And honestly, no. the, this first DLC package we show is not really that interesting. Cool, you can play as one of the guardians. Uh, Ray, you. They were definitely you, teasing. You can do. You can do the same with the any limited version of Breath of the Wild, uh, and so much more. <laughs> Let me go like this. All the Zelda stuff shown until Breath of the Wild 2 just felt like they knew what they were doing, teasing us before we actually get to Breath of the Wild 2. We saw Skyward Sword, whatever. Dumb. We saw this Zelda game And that's all we're getting thing. for the 35th anniversary. I at, le at least we're getting something. So far, Donkey Kong is not getting anything. By the way, here's Breath of the Wild 2. Okay, that like I mentioned... Good. Like I mentioned in the commentary, it does look good. Like I said, uh, I get the idea that uh, now that they have to be more confident and they don't have to work on something like the Wii U. 
we can ju we could just you know copy paste the map of the first uh, game, re retweak it a bit, and add a couple of new stuff. In this case, a vertical dimension with you know the the added floating stuff, which is pretty neat. But also probably a downward vertical stuff because in the, the game opens up with. Uh, Zelda and Link finding Ganondorf's corpse, which apparently is super powerful now, despite Ganon being beaten in the previous game. What the fuck is going on? Um, it Again, you know, some people... Well, initially we believed that that skeletal being was Ganondorf. I still think it could be, and in which case, guys, we started Nintendo Z3 with the corpse of Ganondorf, we end Nintendo Z3 with the corpse of Ganondorf. With the, uh, unfortunately, with less uh, eating, but... Uh, well, don't you, don't you see, Tia? Zelda was the one that got The eaten. Ganondorf in Breath of the Wild... No, no, the, the Ganondorf in Breath of the Wild 2 is Ganondorf after being yeeted into the volcano by Kazuya. <laughs> Smash Bros. Not even once. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, some people are thinking that that corpse may be demise instead, which people have theorized that the reason Skyward Sword is being released is because if Breath of the Wild is the conclusion of a timeline. Oh my god! Um, we well, we mentioned it somewhere else, so with, especially with Edgy, but yeah, the Hyrule story is now more confusing than ever. <laughs> um, uh, I. I haven't really played Breath of the Wild. I couldn't get into it, but I I do plan on getting back to it. Just so but uh, open mind. But, but with that, yeah, the Nintendo Direct is over. At Treehouse, we showcased the uh, Metroid Dread and uh, No More Heroes Three. And Joe mm -hmm. Mansion, pretty cool too. Um, still wish, still yeah, wish Travis Touchstone was actually playable instead of a me costume, but whatever. Uh, <coughs> sorry, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, but yeah, and with that, it's pretty much it for E3. I There's too so many games so coming yeah, out this I, year. I don't care. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say this: Nintendo won E3. They won it. They supported it. They gave E3 purpose this year again. Like I said, I'm glad we got E3, but I won't deny that a lot of the E3 showing was pretty weak. And yes, I get the circumstances, but. Like I said, some companies didn't even need to show, considering how they had basically nothing. I already mentioned what I needed at the beginning. What about you, Dej? Yeah, it's it's good. My poor wallet. There, I need to finish my backlog. <laughs> so, what was your favorite E3 showing you saw? Uh, Mario Plus Rabbits. Now, now I have three games to look for. I was no, no, how many games there? I meant to actually uh, which call for? Oh, I meant to actually Nintendo, which was your obviously. yeah. It, it's fu it's funny how they yeah, barely Mario had anything last year, and now this year it's like okay, fine. It's so like I said, the way Nintendo work is like normally they try to release stuff closer to the release date. Some obvious exceptions being there, but ever since 2017, it just seems like they've doubled down on really only releasing a game when they're within well enough a vicinity what? of it. And I gotta say, it was a very smart move on their purpose to wait with Metroid Dread because yeah that game is coming out this year a game we've been waiting for for over 15 years is confirmed to be coming out this and, year uh, and it's not like you're just mentioning passing by they seem to have been a bit of an aggressive marketing campaign so there is that um, also this, this also means that the allegedly I'll just say that last DLC characters for Smash should be announced by the time of November December all right, well, the game awards, well, uh, well, 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 we'll see. All I'm just saying is, people who think it's Shantae because Way Forward worked on Advance Wars. Okay, Lord, let, me, let, me, let me put it easily this way. I can't believe Sakurai wants to make it like count being symbolic of something. Remember, Bayonetta was symbolic of something. She was the most voted characters allegedly in the voting ballot um, <laughs> in a couple of countries. Um, so I get the idea he wants to replicate a kind of event with like an, a character that he considers important for a specific reason. It might still be something that we don't us we don't see as important as he as he sees it. I just hope it's not a fucking Gen Eight Pokemon, please. It's going to be Master Chief. I keep telling people he fi Master Chief finishes the fight. <sighs> Oh god, that actually is a fitting moon. And that would mean that I predicted... No, you. no, Marcos predicted Master Chief. 
No, 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 no. I predicted Master Chief. Go back and check your video. <laughs> Someone predicted something, and just, yes. And, and just like with Master Chief did, y'all laughed we, at No you one like laughed at you. We, we only Sephiroth. laughed at you with Sephiroth. Well, okay. Well, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you snored and laughed at me for predicting Sephiroth. Yeah, no one clowned on you with Master Chief. But, uh, but that's just, uh, you know, something that will happen in a couple of months, hopefully, before the end of the year. We'll see what happens. Overall, again, maybe we were a bit flowery with our predictions. <laughs> well, I, 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 did, fair, I did stay consistent, aside from just trying to guess which character was, I did stay consistent and like, like I said, what I did believe came to pass that there was no double reveal and so far we still have the ideal confirmation that this is the last DLC battle, DLC pass. I was actually talking left. about our predictions. I was actually talking about our predictions video as yeah, a whole. Sorry, so no free free. But you know, overall, that was that was an event. We we need to clear out our black blocks because there's too many games coming out right now. Let me just put it like this: I'm just happy to have mm -hmm, you free. Back. Same for all the good, the bad, and the ugly. It was good to have you free. <laughs> all right. He, he was hoping the one of 2022 fares better, if there is one in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. See ya.